morning and welcome to this unusual service. We are taking part in a conventicle service. In it, we are remembering the Scottish Covenanters of 300 years ago, when because of religious persecution, our forefathers could only worship in the open air and at the risk of their lives. We now join in the steps of the Covenanters and to try and learn something of their deep faith and their strong commitment. We commence our service this morning by singing from Psalm 118, and we sing it to the tune Glasgow. Oh, let us join together in prayer. O oh God, we come to thee this morning, remembering that thou hast said in thy word that wherever thy name is held up and wherever thy people meet together, thou wilt draw near unto them and make thy presence known. We pray, O oh God, this morning that, that this promise will be fulfilled in this service. And as we share together in this act of worship, grant that our hearts may be drawn out to worship Thee in spirit and in truth. And grant, O God, that as we read Thy Word, as we sing Thy praise, that we may do all with a single eye to promote Thy honour and thy glory. Bless not only those who are gathered here in the open air, but we remember those, O oh God, who will share this service in their homes. We ask, O oh God, that to them thou wilt grant thy blessing as it will come to us as we share it here. Lord, grant thy blessing now as we wait before thee in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Reading from the Word of God in Hebrews chapter 11, at the 32nd verse. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, 
that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Sixteen sixty one to sixteen eighty eight was a testing time for the church in Scotland. An act of Parliament had been passed which decreed that everyone was to recognize the king's authority not only in civil affairs but also in ecclesiastical affairs. Four hundred ministers refused to acknowledge the demands of that act, and they were ejected from their pulpits. Not only ejected from their pulpits, but separated from their congregations with fierce restrictions imposed upon them. And to meet the spiritual needs of their congregations, the only way in which they could meet together was to meet illegally in the glens and in the moors of Scotland. And so came about these conventicle services. They were simple in their form, yet they met the tremendous need of the people at this particular time. Because of the restrictions imposed upon them, the Covenanters had to resort to stealth and ingenuity to avoid the troopers who were constantly harassing them as they met for their conventicle services. There are many wonderful incidents that are recorded of this particular period. And there's one lovely anecdote that comes from it. It's a story of the young lass who was on her way to a conventicle service where the Lord's Supper was to be observed. She was met by a trooper. The trooper asked her, whither bound? The young lass, carrying her Bible wrapped in a handkerchief, answered him, my elder brother has died, and I am on my way to a meeting of the friends to hear his last will and testament read. These meetings, as we have said, met a rich and spiritual need of the people. And here at this very spot, many of the Covenanter ministers preached their sermons. These services were, were not short services. Three hours could be spent listening to the Word of God and receiving the sacraments. There was no such thing as a watch timing in those days. And these people hungered for the Word of God. Many of the sermons are still available to us today. And how I would have loved to have heard some of those sermons, particularly a sermon that was preached by Richard Cameron just two weeks before he died at Erd's Moss.